Welcome to the We Are Libertarians podcast. I'm your host, Hody Johns. I am joined by some great minds that are going to be talking about a really, really a subject that doesn't come to light as often as it should. But I am joined by the great Sarah Daggers, Lucy Brenton, Michael Burns, and Kristen Calhoun, we're going to have Sarah Brady Wagner on in just a moment. But let's go ahead and introduce you to each of these guys real quick. You know way too much about me already. <laughs> if you don't know these guys, you really should get used to them. Um, so, Sarah Daggers, let's start with you. If you just want to tell me anything that you want to reveal about yourself, but really more importantly, I do want to hear what got you passionate about uh, thinking about sex work, activism, data, uh, what, what made you passionate about that? Go ahead. Um, so I worked a health initiative grant many years ago, um, after Katrina ended up in Arkansas and did that. And it was, um, that after I had to leave there, unfortunately I loved the job, but I, I saw a lot of data that I was sending to the CDC and, um, the department of health that was, it was really it was layered data. It was it ended up being bad data. And then I went to um, take, I took a position with uh, the DEA task force. I wasn't there very long. And that sounds horrible. Please don't send me that death threats. Um, but uh, while I was there, one of the, the head of the agencies was, we were talking, he's like, you know, if you want to do good for the community, you would legalize marijuana. Well, so he used the word legalize, of course, because that's what we hear. And I was like, yeah, I kind of was already there. I did substance abuse stuff for the, this grant for, for years. And um, one, of the, one of the grants that we had was a weed and seed grant that included prostitution. So they're basically going after street drugs. And then also it inclusively, it was also included, they were including um, sex workers, prostitutes. And that sort of stuck, lingered in the back of my head. I was only there a few months and I was like, you know what, this is wrong. We're putting people for victimless offenses in prison. Um, we're exploiting people. We're using government force. And I became a libertarian um, three days later. I couldn't sleep. I quit my job. I said, this is wrong. And um, I started doing activism for uh, gun rights, for ending the drug war. And then later I started seeing a, a lack of conversation for sex workers. And so that's how I got into it. I met, I met some great activists um, that have really inspired me. Norma Jean, she's amazing. Um, and so I've been getting out there and, um, we've been successful in, in putting a plank, um, in, a, in our, um, in our libertarian party platform for sex work, which I'm very proud of. And I just want to make sure that everyone who's talking about it knows the language, has the data because there's a lot of propaganda out there and, and we need to make sure that people are empowered. So, because People, I don't want people to be scared to talk about it because they're scared they're going to hurt people. We really need to get the information out there. And so that's why I do what I do. Awesome. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, Lucy, let's move over to you. I think uh, this is definitely not my first time having heard of you. Yes. Uh, you've. Uh, this isn't. wouldn't even be the first time President Trump has heard from you before. True. Uh, yeah, we tweeted back at him. That was pretty fun. Yeah, go ahead and fire off uh, your story What makes you and what makes you interested and passionate about this. Well, I'm just really passionate about the idea that we own ourselves. Each of us should have the right to make the decisions over our own body, so long as we don't hurt anybody else. Um, I'm an old married lady with 10 kids. So I'm about as conservative as it, as it comes. I grew up in a very strict religion. I grew up Mormon. Um, and I still, you know, am a woman of faith today, but not religion. That's a very important distinction. Um, so I just believe when it comes right down to it, no one else has the right to make decisions about my body except for me. And if I want to prostitute my body, um, if I want to engage in sex work, whether that's, you know, through marriage or some other means, I should have the right to do so. And I should also have the right not to do so, which is why it's important that we're having this conversation, because making sure that sex workers are safe um, is, very, is something I'm very passionate about. And legalizing it would obviously make it safer. 
Very true. I am. Uh, I'm out here in Utah, Mormon myself. So, uh, oh my so gosh, you yeah. and your ten kids, you're lowballing it. You know, I can tell I know, you got I'm out. Such a slacker. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Michael Burns, why don't hear from you then? Ah, uh, well, it's it always seemed to be one of those issues. Like after, when I was active, that like no one was talking about, and so I dug into it, learned more about it, and. Over time with my activism, I met people and it's just snowballed, you know. Um, and I do, I do tend to naturally have a gravitation towards issues in which there is issues that deeply affect people rather than just like paper cuts issues. So certainly one that can uh, turn your life upside down, to be sure. Yeah. Um, all right. Let's. Uh... Uh, finish it off here with uh, Kristen Calhoun. Is it Calhoun? Yes. Okay, great. Sometimes you got like the Calhoun or something like that silent H in there, but go ahead, Kristen. Uh, tell us uh, your story. What makes you interested in this subject? I'm a sex worker. <laughs> I do this every day. So, uh, yeah, I, I joined the Libertarian Party because I wanted to help decriminalize sex work. And I fell in love with the Libertarian Party for all of pretty much their entire platform. And here I am. And I was one of the co-founders of the um, of our caucus. And uh, yeah, here I am. Great. Uh, ask me questions. Yeah. That's my, that's my thing. <laughs> All right. Well, let's, uh, <laughs> I, I am sure just by saying that people have a million questions, but let's start with the appropriate ones first. Um, <laughs> and, and Kristen, I'll start with you, but this is open forum. I'm not going to say, oh, it's your turn now for the rest of this, oh, okay. but I did want to start with you, Kristen. What is sex work? That's a really good question. And sex work actually encompasses, it's a pretty broad range. Um, it encompasses um, stripping, cam modeling, um, massages, um, prostitution, escorting, um, you know, it's uh, BDSM. It's a pretty broad range. I mean, there, the, the thing that we want to recognize too is there's many of those that I've just described that are technically legal right now. So a lot of times right now, what we're just focusing on is technically escorting and or prostitution, um, just because right now there is the huge stigma against that and it is technically illegal. Okay. Anybody else can chime in. What, uh, what is sex work and give us your thoughts on anything Kristen just said. Um, I'd like to chime in here because I haven't heard anybody say it yet and I didn't want to steal the thunder, but um, the chairman of the, well, former chairman of the Indiana State Libertarian Party is a good buddy of mine named Joe Hopman. And uh, he said something once that really just drove it home for me. And he said, you know, prostitution is sex and the free market. Which of those two things do you disagree with? <laughs> But, you know, I think, you know, when I look at what's out there and how, you know, women are treated, the thing that horrifies me is that I have seven daughters and three sons. And if any of them were to choose sex work um, as their vocation, they could very potentially be in grave danger and harm. Um, I think when you're involved in sex work, there's there's a lot of bad things that can happen to you. And I'm just speaking as a lay person, not a really great expert on this. Um, but what horrifies me is thinking that something bad could happen to them because people that are involved in sex work are less likely to come forward because they're already doing something that is, is criminal at this point. So they're less likely to see, seek help and therefore bad actors uh, could then go on being bad actors uh, just as a result of that. Yeah, totally makes sense. I don't know how to ask a question. You're good. Oh no, Kristen, just just go. <laughs> okay, so um, I I have been a full time sex worker for two and a half years now, and I don't want to say that what you just said is incorrect, but honestly, I I have never been raped, I have never been robbed. I have never been disrespected as a sex worker. The biggest thing that we are up against is law enforcement. So mm. that, that is the that is the biggest negative thing that I'm up against as a sex worker is you know harassment from law enforcement. Yes. 
Yeah, and definitely feel free to correct me because I'm sitting here in the buckle of the Bible Belt. This is an issue that, you know, I've, I've come to know recently, basically through your activism as well as Sarah Daggers. And I'm very grateful for you bringing it to the forefront because, you know, as a woman living in an affluent suburb, this is not something that I see in my everyday life. And so to find out what's going on, how they're targeted, you know, how you were targeted, as you said, by law enforcement, is just really shocking. You're going about your own business. You're earning a living in the way that you've chosen to earn it. Um, I mean, people steal millions and millions of dollars of briefcases and don't serve a day in jail. Um, but you decide to take control of your body and use it in a way that's profitable for you. And bam, they want to put you in jail. It's ridiculous. And I think that speaks volumes to um, our platform, which I'll read it to you. The, and this is the Libertarian Party's platform. And we're the only major party, just for just so everyone knows, we're the only major party that actually has a sex worker positive platform. And the, the platform reads, the Libertarian Party supports the decriminalization of prostitution. We assert the right of consenting adults to provide sexual services to clients for compassion and the right for, of clients to purchase sexual services from consenting sex workers. Um, this is going to make sex workers safer because it's going to allow sex workers to be able to vet clients. It's going to allow clients to vet sex workers. Um, it open it, it allows um, if there is violence that, that shouldn't have occurred, that wasn't agreed upon by both parties, that there are re repercussions for that. Um, so there, there have, there were instances in such as, um, in Rhode Island, where it was decriminalized for a, a period of time. And studies show that actual uh, violent rape went down, um, what was it, 32%? Um, I have to look, I think it was 32%. Um, if I'm, I might be off one or two percentages. Um, so, so we believe that libertarians, libertarian party, we want the party and activists to be out there encouraging this, this language of decriminalization, decriminalization, not legalization. We understand what you mean when you say legalize, yes. but we really want to make sure that we start focusing on that decriminalization. Um, and, and even those who aren't within the party or of our ideology, we really want to encourage people to, to get past the propaganda that's being put out there, understand that right now they're putting out information that's saying sex trafficking and they're talking about everyone. They're using numbers that are really fabricate, fabricated, um, by, by the government and by people who want to save sex workers. Um, but you know, if, if sex workers are victims, why are we arresting them and putting them in a cage? You know, mm -hmm. how does that make sense? So we're, we're going in the right direction right now. And I'm really proud to see so many people standing up for what's right. Yeah, th this video is getting a lot of views already uh, and a lot of questions as well. So, uh, really, we need to dispel the, the here's the sad part is when you say, what is sex work? And Kristen says a dozen things and you guys add on a few more and talk about it. And then in most people's minds, especially out here in Utah, what is sex work? It's a crime. You know, it's very simple, you know, and what yes. happens to criminals? Well, you get thrown in prison, you get incarcerated, you get in trouble. You know, there's a million different things that can happen to you as a sex worker that really land you in hot water. And so I think this is when we say what is sex work, the reason we have to ask the question, even though some of us might know better than others, is because there are our friends and neighbors who only know it is a crime. You know, you, you mentioned the, uh, Sarah, you mentioned the the faulty statistics among those, uh, the, the law enforcement that say, oh, they're more likely to commit X, Y, and Z crimes. Well, if you're doing sex work, yeah, you also have to commit tax fraud because you can't put I'm a sex worker on your on your you know on your on your W2 form. Do you pay taxes? Sorry, go ahead, Kristen. I do pay taxes. She pays taxes, everybody. I so do pay taxes. You probably lost a lot of respect I do. for my I, I submit my taxes right as a 
I, uh, right. I know. I think I, I think my, and I have an accountant. I think he submits them as the other professional service. I think that's what he puts them as. So yes, I pay a lot of taxes. <laughs> <laughs> You know, but it also leads to other crimes. I think the thing is, is when we talk about drug users and their propensity to commit crimes, well, yeah, because you've, they're already committing one crime. They're, you're already forcing them to work a, under the radar, and that's a thread. They're attached to a million other things. So it's been asked by Morrison, Morgan Rigg in the chat, and it was the next question, Sarah, that you wanted me to get to anyway. And it's, why decriminalize sex work instead of legalizing it? Yes. Um, if you want me to answer, who you Sorry, want to answer? everybody goes. Okay. <laughs> everybody at the same time. Yes. Um, so if we look at a couple of things, um, who owns your body? You own your body. So we need to take away the laws that are affiliated with it. When you do legalize, you look at um, in in the U.S. All we really have is Nevada to really look at, and so. When you look at Nevada, the there are a certain number of licenses that are given out, right? Mm. So only certain places are open, and then you have broth so you have these brothels, um, and then the, the the sex workers, the the providers, are going to have to pay this huge fee to rent a room, and they stay there for forever, or not forever, but for this amount of time, um, they go through these checks. Um, and one of the things that I, when I was listening to, um, I just had a, a went my, my it's just a blank, the, the owner that just passed away recently, the, he owned most of the brothels. One of the things that, with that? Yep. Dennis Hoff. Sorry. Right. Um, one of the things I remember him saying when, when I, he was being I actually crazy, used to work at one of the brothels, so I'll, I'll comment when you're done. Yeah. He, he would say, he, he made this statement about, well, when I took over, I let, I let them, that's the key word there, I let them be able to service men and women. It used to just be only, they could only service men, but now I let them service men and women. Well, you know, why is it that the provider get, doesn't get to decide what he or she wants to let someone do or not do. Um, it really goes back to self ownership. Um, and the, you know, there's, there's just so many other reasons, um, you know, uh, that, that, that really it should be decriminalized. Um, uh, I'll let Kristen talk about the rest of it, which she was touching on. So I actually, um, I used to work at one of Dennis Hoff's brothels, um, in 2017, I worked there. Um, so honestly, the, the main thing that one of the main reasons that women go there or yeah, is that it's, it's, it's legal, you know, and that's what women want, you know, they want to be able to go there and not be criminalized for what they're doing. So the problem that we're up against though, is when you say that it's legal, so we had to go through an STI check every week that we personally had to pay for. Um, we did have to pay room and board. Um, when you're staying at a brothel, you have to pay 50% to the house. Um, so can you make money? Yes, but it's, it's, you know, you're still paying all of these exorbitant costs on top of that. And, you know, there are some ladies, unfortunately, that go there and they really don't make any money because they end up going in the hole from all these other expenses. And that's kind of one of the main reasons that the Libertarian Party wants to decriminalize versus legalize is because you have people that are doing what we call survival sex work. So ultimately they are doing this to survive. So when you are putting you know, someone up against this where they're doing something just to survive and they can't get a license and they can't technically legalize what they're doing, they're gonna get they're going to get a ticket. They're going to get arrested. And you're just pushing them further and further down. So that's ultimately why the Libertarian Party is pushing to decriminalize, because we want to, we want to take away the laws that make it illegal. And we want people to be able to be autonomous with their bodies, be able to do what they want to do, and not have all these other regulations. To anyone who might be confused on the terminology, still, 
it might be helpful to think of is full decriminalization as opposed to some of the more bastardized decriminalization that happened with like drugs, where there might still be penalties, it's just slightly less long sentences or fines. The way, would, the way that I normally describe it is I say decriminalized means that you take away the laws that make something illegal. When you legalize something, you're adding laws, you're adding stipulations to make something legal. And as libertarians, we don't want more laws. Right. I, th I think it's a good point. The the When we legalize marijuana, now a lot of people don't know, we're actually technically decriminalizing marijuana. Because nobody can legalize marijuana. It's a federally, it, there's nothing you could do, right, on the federal level. What you choose to do is you say, I'm not going to enforce your stupid law. You know, you say it's schedule whatever, and I tell you it's schedule middle finger is basically how you respond. You know, and this is, we are not going, this happens with immigration as well. Now, the federal, on the federal level, they have many methods of recourse against the states when they do these type of things. When they, you choose to make a sanctuary city, you forfeit certain benefits that the federal government will, will kick back to you. You know, they, they'll give you X amount of money for your highways and schools, and they won't give that to you if you don't enforce their policy the way that they like. Um, so this is, this is kind of one of the entanglements that you get when you legalize something. If you say, okay, let's legalize, legalize kind of goes hand in hand with regulation at the moment. Is that accurate? Yes. Well, I mean, marijuana in the states that it is legal, I mean, they're they're paying taxes on it. Right. Which you know, libertarians don't agree with. Um, I mean, they, you know, they have regulations as to what, you know, they need to do to make it technically legal. Right. So are those, those are those are hurdles and things that we want as libertarians to, to decriminalize sex work. Basically, what this is, is when we're when we, you know, when you say uh, I was reading Reason magazine race recently and there was a story in there about a, a girl and she was 16 years old and she put on her social media her uh, giving oral sex to a guy and they never found the guy. I don't know how hard they tried, but she's in tra uh, she's in trouble now for child pornography. Right. Even though she herself is 16 and she's the one who posted it um, and she's going to jail. I think I when we. That. Yeah, when we talk about legalization, the issue now that we have that comes up is, well, we're not sending her to jail. We're just making her pay $3,000 a year, you know, <laughs> for her to do this. And then it's like, well, wait a minute, we're not going for that either. Because then if you don't pay that, then guess what happens? You end up going to jail. So really, it's just cycling around jail one way or another, right? So, so I, I, I think I think that that's about accurate. Now, there's a couple other terms that you guys talked about. We even talked about before we got on the show. But what's something that somebody like me, who's a lay person, when they talk about it, that you want to make sure that they discuss it in this way or use this terminology? What are some mistakes that you hear, and what's the better way to correct it? Even if it's not just terminology, what's maybe a better way to construct an argument in favor of sex work? Um, a lot of times, people use the term John. And um, we, we like to use client is a better term. Uh, John is, um, it's, it's kind of a slight, it's a, it's a negative term. Um, provider, um, but also some sex, sex worker, you know, in provider that some people are, it does, it depends on who you're talking about or talking to. Um, the, um, some of the other terms are sex trafficking. Um, a lot of people hear that that term and it's not that it's used improperly. It's that the government hasn't really given it a clear definition. They don't define it in a certain way. Um, we know what we're talking about when we say sex trafficking, right? Somebody that's been forced into it. Um, that's not necessarily what the government means when they say it. So um, coercion is used very loosely. Um, we've seen that in other other mm. um, other issues as well, where they use that word very loosely. Um, the Green Party actually they talk about that. They say um, when we say sex work is work, they hate it, and they actually actually in their platform is sex work is not work. Um, that no one who's in sex work is, and I'm saying it's almost verbatim. Honestly, it's th these are the words that they use. Um, 
sex work is not work. There, no one's in sex work that wants to be in, nobody wants to be in sex work. They're all forced into this, whether it's because somebody's put them there or because the, the economy is in such a way that they can't get a job where they can get, you know, a, a, a real job. Um, so that, those are some those are some terms. Um, uh, Kristen might have a few others that I, I don't think of right off the top of my head. Thank so you. You just you just made a really good comment that I wanted to touch on. Is um, you know the the topic that nobody chooses this. So I I I have a bachelor's degree. Um, I definitely chose this profession. Um, I chose this profession because obviously it's lucrative. Um, I enjoy it. Um, I'm having a good time in my life. I get to travel and see the world. I get to spend time with gentlemen that I really enjoy spending time with. I, yeah, I own my own business. I'm very happy with my life right now. And it's, it's frustrating when you hear people say things like that that, you know, nobody chooses this, but I myself chose this and I know many other people that have also chose this. So it's, yeah, it's frustrating. Um, the other thing I want to touch on was the thing that, um, you know, in the media that unfortunately that we're happening right, that's happening right now is they're interchanging sex trafficking with sex work. They are not the same. 100% not the same. Um, I just want to touch base with the uh, the craft case down in Florida, which I'm sure we've all heard of. And, you know, when immediately it busted out into the uh, the news, you know, everything that, was, that came out was that this was this was a sex trafficking case. Well, ultimately, when the when they they did the the research, the, the dil diligence that they needed to do, you know, all of these Asian massage parlor ladies that were there, they were all their willing, able sex workers. So, you know, it's, it's, it's sensational. It's something to make, you know, the news, but it's not accurate. And that, and that's frustrating. You know, I actually posted something recently where, you know, um, in 2017 with the FBI statistics, if you, you know, actually break it down as to, you know, how many sex workers were arrested versus how many actually people that they found out actually were being sex trafficked, the percentage is 1.5%. So, I mean, it's just, it's, it's not an epidemic like the news wants, wants everyone to make it to be. Yeah. And another thing on, on top of that too, I stopped that there were, um, there was, uh, some arrests that were made. They do these prostitution stings or, or sex trafficking scenes, stings, mm -hmm. excuse me. Um, and, and you read the newsprint and they say, oh, the, the, the local police have, um, been doing a undercover operation watching these these spas for 17 months this was this was recently um, in Louisiana South Louisiana 17 months and I'm like it took them 17 months to arrest five women and then they arrest the managers as well because they're they're the they're the pimps and um, so it, yeah. it took that long and then you took all their, their cash money, which were their tips and then their victims, but you arrested them and you put them in prison. So I went there and a, a couple of my friends joined me. It wasn't a large group. It was last minute thing. There were three of us. Oh, I'm sorry. Four of us, two men, two women stood on the side of the road, holding signs saying sex work is work. Um, and I went in afterward and I talked to the manager of the spa and she's real, real sweet. And she said, you know, it's really nice to see that Americans care about us um, because it feels like the Americans don't. Um, we don't have a, a, a good uh, foundation of um, we don't know who to talk to. We don't really know what our rights are. The, the girls that are working here that get arrested, they're scared to death. The managers really don't know either. We work, we work here. This is her words. We work here and we work at the nail salons because we have a language barrier and we're trying to work a, a regular job. The police come in here and we've seen them put their hands on 
put our hands on their penises and then arrest us. Um, how do you prove that? I don't know. Um, but why are we harassing these, these individuals who are trying to work and just trying to, to do what they have to do to provide for their families. Um, and then they put, and then it's even worse because then they put their picture in the paper and on the internet with their addresses and all this information, even though they're, they're, they haven't been, they're, they're not guilty yet in a court of law because they were just arrested. Um, and it's making this unsafe environment. And they're, they're doing stuff like that in Florida now that they wanna make a, a list of people who are providers and clients that have been arrested for, for, for providing or, or for, for using sex work. Um, it's, it's, so, it's so dangerous on so many levels. Um, and especially with our criminal system the way it is, where people are just like in making plea deals just because they, they're scared that they're going to get these 20 years and they're willing to take this lighter sentence, even if they don't even, even if they aren't even guilty for what they're being accused of, which should be legal. Thank you, ladies, for bringing up and holding me accountable to the distinction between, um, you know, decriminalization or lack of criminalization versus legalization. I think it's an important distinction to make, um, as Kristen said, it's the idea of adding on laws to make it legal um, because the government shouldn't have any laws over our body anyway. And the, the kind of outrage that I hear locally, you know, just around town is, you know, oh, they're arresting these prostitutes. Why aren't they arresting the pimps or, you know, the Johns get off scot-free, of course, using the pejorative terms. And as a libertarian, I just don't want anybody arrested. It's consensual. And what somebody does um, and what somebody decides to do with their body is, is really only their business. And um, so I'm in favor, obviously, of if it's consensual sex, if you're adults, then once again, government should just keep their, their fake outrage out of it. I don't think I've ever hated somebody so bad that I want to pay their room and board for the rest of their lives. You know, like when, when you know, when yeah. it comes to arresting somebody, <laughs> it's like, how much do you hate sex, sex worker? I hate them so much that I want to pay for their food and their housing and their security for the rest of their lives. That's such a weird way to hate something, right? Even if you're morally opposed to it, which is fine, you know, then don't do it. Don't participate in it. Uh, this is... You know, you can fight against it culturally if you want to and, and, and talk about it that way. Now, I don't want to encourage that either because that leads to discrimination. And, uh, you know, we hear it's more libertarians is more than just politics. We want freedom for everybody. Right. We want the world set free. This is more than just a political movement. This is absolutely a societal movement. And so I'm not trying to encourage that either. But, but what I'm saying is that's maybe an effective way to talk to your friends. And, and you're like, well, if you don't want to be criminalized, why do you like paying for them? You know, what, what, why do you like that so much? Now, Sarah, you opened the <laughs> you opened the door to bad uh, law enforcement tactics in order to get convictions. Um, one of the things that I noticed, especially in this Robert Kraft case, look, anybody says somebody in the Patriots is doing something slimy, you automatically believe it, first of all. That's that's just, that everybody already knows. That's old news, right? But the issue is with Robert Kraft is then you find out later, oh, hey, he might have done everything by the book and, and been legal. Well, you already trashed the guy's reputation. like, And so the, they'll release these lists and destroy people's reputations. These girls that you're talking about, Sarah, where they say, oh, you know, they, they touched it. You know, usually it's uh, some type of uh, entrapment situation. And so you, you set them up and you put them in these situations and you use these tricky tactics. And then if they don't work, you smear them in the public. You know, uh, another one that comes to mind, this wasn't a sex working case, but just a good example is um, that lady that... The, the 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 cop that shot the guy because she was at the wrong apartment and what did they go and reveal oh he had weed in his house because she did everything wrong but then well we got to cover our bases so i guess we'll trash his reputation if we can this is something that sex workers struggle with maybe more than anything else is cops say well if we can't fight you legally all the time we can't catch you every time we'll do it we're gonna just smash your reputation and make you look bad and in the sex work community and correct me if i'm wrong reputation is perhaps more more important in that community than in any other i mean does that sound right Maybe I'm just well, I mean, to, to an extent, um, 
I, I guess, you know, being in this environment, I mean, we, we all know that we all know what we're getting into. I want to back up for a second because I actually did an interview with um, one of my local newspapers in regards to these stings. And um, one of my clients actually got arrested and I was, I was pretty, I was pretty upset. And I, I contacted one of the lo- local newspapers and I said, you know what? I want to be interviewed in regards to this. And my thing was, is, you know, first of all, they're completely ridiculous because you're not protecting the community. You're not helping anyone. You're not putting criminals behind jail. You're putting regular citizens in jail for absolutely no reason. And the other thing is, you know, you have the media that loves to smear everybody's reputation, like you just said. So this gentleman, you know, unfortunately lost his job and um, yeah, it was just, you know, he was mutilated in, you know, the, the media. And another thing is um, they actually interviewed um, some of the law enforcement people as well. And one of the people that they interviewed was actually a lady. And she said, you really honestly feel that, you know, 85% of sex workers are being sex trafficked. And just pulling this randomly out of the air, because literally they have never in my area, they've never found anybody that's been sex trafficked. And, you know, like I said before, you know, with the statistics that I gave from the FBI, the the national average right now is 1.5%. So it's just, you know, those things that we are up against that are just so incredibly frustrating. And isn't there something to talk about with like so, the prohibition? Sorry, Michael, I'm, I'll let you go. But when we say, well, we learned that we didn't eliminate alcohol, we just made the alcohol more dangerous and the business around it more dangerous. So even if trafficking isn't very common, yeah, we pretty much know it would be less common even than it is now if we legalized it. I mean, that just seems patently obvious, right? You know, <laughs> if I mean, goodness knows, you know, maybe it's not alcohol, maybe it's not sex work, but if they make burgers illegal, I'm going to do some shady mafia mob stuff to get my hands <laughs> on a hamburger, right? So, I mean, really, it's the same thing. I mean, I'm probably more no. likely to die because of my love of hamburgers than I am because of sex work or drugs, you know, but dangerous or not, it's my choice. Sorry, go ahead. So I want to point out that a lot of the discourse and there's a lot of similarities actually between the conversation between about immigration in between sex work and that most of the discourse is disingenuous. Like a lot of the things that you hear is completely disingenuous. The arguments that are used is not what they really mean. Like they're just using points that they think will score the most points mm-hmm. rather than anything else. Um, like in immigration, for example, like most of, like in the 90s, there was this huge push by what you might call radical greens on it. And they, and somehow they got the right to copy radical environmentalists. I don't know what happened there, but the three think tanks that do most of the immigration pumps out most of the like anti-immigration stuff were all funded by like rich environmentalists and basically you had a similar scenario with sex work and and of course it took a life immigration took a life of its own and you kind of had something similar with sex work although it has been kept and so you have this weird alliance of Feminists, not all, but like certain factions on the left. And on the right, you have social conservatives. And a lot of the stuff is disingenuous. They're kind of repeating stuff that was used in the late 1800s and early 1900s. They're using a lot of the same rhetoric and around the same eugenics arguments because it was based on... Basically, the original stuff was about, there was a huge scare about basically Asians and whites procreating together and cohabiting. And they're using, they just took a lot of the same scare rhetoric and copied it with the current stuff. So keep in mind that when you're arguing with some of the 
some of these people they're not being completely honest about what their their positions. Some of them are because they're true believers, but not all of them. Sure, it's kind of a vir- virtue signaling of people on the right, right? To be like, I wouldn't let that happen to me. I would never procreate with an interracial. Yes, whatever. Yeah, it's it's. <laughs> they're, they're trying to they're trying to scare people by saying sex trafficking and human trafficking, and they're trying to make it look into like this really big issue. Because if you're scared, then what do you want? You want government to save us, right? Um, we're scared. There's all this violence. We're scared. This all these people that are being harmed. So you should give up your freedom. You should give up your your money. You should give up um, all of these things so that we can arrest these bad people who are doing this thing. And this thing is, we'll give it this really scary name, human trafficking, sex trafficking. And it's all about the women and the children because those are the victims because they're very helpless and we, we've got to save them. And so that, that, that's basically the propaganda that's being put out. But instead, what they've what they've done, they've created these um, bills. Um, Trump actually created um, this bill that he passed. It's the um, I I can never remember the acronym what it stands for, but it's uh, a Stop in- Enabling Sex Traffickers Act. Um, then also it's uh, FOS. FOSFA, um, S-F-O-S-T-A, and um, yeah, it, it, it's, it's terrible. What, what they've done is basically taken a safe place because, you know, when you think of sex work, most people, I don't, but and probably no, but none of my friends do either because they know better at this point, but most people, they think about, oh, what the, have they seen on TV? You watch Pretty Woman and, and you know, some of these... Um, um, uh, FBI shows, NCIS, and it's this, this, this can't, this, this individual, this lady of the night who's dressed in a really short leather skirt that I wish I could wear, but I can't. <laughs> I just don't have the legs for it, so I just can't do it. But they put them in these fishnet stockings and all this stuff, and and they go, oh well, you know, and they they sell that and and so that's what people think but really most sex workers are on the internet that's where that's where you you know we and we had like um back uh, back page and and back page was a huge supporter of of sex workers and um helped with activism financially helped with the platform and so sex workers were able to vet their clients there was there was a, like a blacklist basically of Okay, this client is on. You you probably don't want to use this client because they did this or they did that, um, um, and and so and that's gone. There there's these these this ability to to protect mm. in this community that's now gone. So you know people keep saying, oh, we want to we want to save people. Well, you know what? This is how you save people. Leave them the hell alone. <laughs> They're going to ask for help if they need it. Fuck off, guys. Come on. <laughs> give me a break. All right. Well, we've broken our F word, Cherry. So go ahead and let anybody. It's... <laughs> I'm sorry to all my Utah listeners. It's over. Sorry. <laughs> no, you're just fine. I'm just horsing around with you. And, and of course, I have to say horsing around because I still have to appeal to my Utah listeners after this. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's. What you're saying is very accurate. There is a, an avid problem with people not letting other people cover their own securities. And they say, well, I'm illegalizing this for your sake, right? And because it's it would just be too dangerous if you yes. did it. Look, if we were doing that, there would be no bars in America open ever. Like it's a predatory fish tank and everybody knows it. And so you get your friends, you have, yeah, watch each other's drinks. You walk to your cars together or you don't and you roll and you roll with the punches. Now, look, I'm sympathetic to the people that have it happen, but if they, if they choose to walk down a dark alley alone, I'm not going to allow the walking down the dark alley. If I'm going to outlaw anything, it's the person who assaults them going down that dark alley. Right. And so why criminalize the behavior? I, I think it's that false, you know, I'm trying to help them to find a better way you know like uh you mentioned Kristen, you got a bachelor's degree i did too and here i am podcasting right <laughs> wasting the whole thing you know i mean it's a <laughs> sometimes you just find you're something it. that Come works on. better for Sex you <laughs> right <laughs> yeah. you know um i would like to share that 
probably been 10, maybe 15 years ago that I read The Mayflower Madam, Sidney Biddle Barrow's book. And I was so inspired by the business lessons that I learned from that particular book and how she took care of her, of her employees, that she had health insurance for them, um, that, those, that those ladies knew that they were safe, that um, if they had a, a less than optimal experience with a certain client, um, if it, you know, maybe it was bad for that woman, but another woman, the, the behavior would have been acceptable. There were cultural differences because she had international customers. So, you know, different employees would decide, you know, what kind of sex work they wanted to take on because for some there was a cultural barrier and for others there weren't. Um, but she, because she approached it in a very business-like fashion, those ladies had access to healthcare and that made everybody safer. Yeah. Yep. Awesome point. Yeah. The, the, it's, it's, it's safer for everybody involved, but it's all, it, it, it's, I guess it's similar to the abortion issue. Sometimes you just say, well, I'm doing it for the mother's sake. And then you don't look at the potential harm that the mother could be in similar to sex work. You say, well, I, we're doing all this, this legal, legal stuff for your sake without really actually caring compassionately about their positions. I mean, if you were to want to intervene, Finding them three thousand dollars and and locking them up for five years doesn't exactly scream loving to me. I don't remember that. Mm -hmm. I'm I, I got my degree in theology. I don't remember which religion teaches that that's like the way to go when you really care about somebody is to throw them in prison. But hey, what do I know? I'm not a politician, so I haven't used that type of rhetoric before. Um, so let's uh, let's talk about some. We're doing fine on time, but I did something. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Um, I just want to talk about, you know, one thing that, that, um, you know, we, we talked about decriminalization and at this point, there's actually only one country in the world that's completely decriminalized sex work and that's New Zealand. So, and one of the reasons that that is kind of the, the global go-to is because what they did is they actually, you know, and they did and they're the first ones to say that we did everything that all the other countries did previously. You know, we were doing the stings, we were arresting the sex workers, we were arresting the clients, and it wasn't working. So we actually sat, sat down with sex workers and we said, you know, what's going to make this whole situation better? And ultimately, what they found out is decriminalization was the best thing to do. So this was in 2003 or 2004 that they actually did this, where they completely decriminalized all sex work. Since they've done this, they've found that um, violence against um, sex workers and women in general has very much diminished. They have found that um, they are, you know, not seeing the STIs that they found previously, you know, with sex workers. They're finding that sex workers are more willing to go to the healthcare professionals and tell them what they do with their profession. You know, and it's, it's destigmatized it as well as, you know, with the decriminalization. So they found it that it's, you know, and that's, and that's, it's crazy that, you know, you have this model out there that, you know, just, just for example, just one organization that the World Health Organization has said, you know, this is what we all need to do. We have this, you know, model right here that's showing how successful it is. We all need to do this, but we still have that pushback from all other countries in the world that are just, they're so scared for religious, sociological, ethical, whatever reasons to not do that. Right, well, because there's so many times that p politicians have gotten involved and really influenced the culture for the better. Sorry, that was facetious. Go ahead. <laughs> I gotta say, I um, I have um, I went with my first day in Tennessee. I actually went, and I think I posted about this in in our private group, where I stopped at a religious place that had out there. It was a sign that said human trafficking, and I come from a very religious background and I actually I you know I try not to talk about religion too much because it's you know my own personal beliefs and I try not to, to go too deep into it um but I I taught I was I was scared I've got to say I was scared to talk to them and um I talked to the lady that was in there and she she had the signs behind her of the, all the talking points about all, how sex workers you know, or usually they start at age 12 and um, that all these thousands of people are trafficked every day. And um, I tell you what, the, um, 
it, it's hard to have those conversations, but I've been, I've been talking to, to people. And I think that when you really get there and you get, you really talk about the actual points, they don't want to see sex workers get arrested either because, well, they think you're a victim. So <laughs> they, they, and they don't want They don't want to say that they want sex workers who are victims to get arrested. But um, I think that they want a little bit of a change that what they're seeing right now. But when I look at, and this, um, this was a point I think Michael wanted to, to talk about, but um, when I look at the online, cause I, I'm sure I get posts uh, tagged every day, probably 10 or 20 times a day on a post of a sex worker who's been arrested or a sting operation or something. And so I don't even say anything and I just read it. And these are non-libertarians that go, we should legalize this. Why is this still illegal? Stop wasting our money on, on stuff like this and go fight real crime. And so I really believe that the actual, I don't have data to back this up, but I really believe that the actual public opinion is that they want to see as they know legalize. Of course, we want to decriminalize, but they're saying we want to legalize this. And what they really do mean and don't, they don't know it is that they want to decriminalize sex work because they don't want taxpayer dollars wasted on arresting people, putting them in prison and creating this, this hardship on, on the providers and clients and the community as a whole. Yeah. Now you're opening a box that I think I do want to dig a little deeper into here. There is, I guess it's, it's known fairly well that we have a public perception or what we think the public perception is, but it turns out that's not actually the public perception. It's one of those, and I hate to relate it this way, but it's almost like the Trump supporters where it's like, yeah, I don't want to tell anybody I'm voting for Trump, but I'm voting for Trump. You know what I mean? There's, there's a situation where it's like, Hey, I don't want to tell people that I like really like sex workers, but like one out of every two guys will hire one. So, I mean, you know, you know, it's just one of those things that you say, okay, so there's actually like a false dichotomy that, that they say, hey, here's what the public says, it looks bad, but it actually, more people than you think are actually in your court. Now, Michael, you actually talked about this first, I'll let you start on it, but then let's move around from there. Oh, yeah, so now, of course, there's different polls over time and different methodologies, but generally speaking... Um, yeah, so I have seen polls that show Dogs. <laughs> recently where 55% want, when asked the question, should prostitution be legal? They say yes. I've, uh, I've also seen more, I've also seen recently where it says closer to 49, but in, in the polls generally, they say they outnumber the, the yays outnumber the nays. And for libertarians, like I've seen libertarians commonly push for positions that are wildly that pull like very low and this is one that pulls relatively high and this is not and because of that it generally sh you shouldn't this isn't an issue you should be particularly shy about although it is a risque topic so you should be a little bit careful with it but but with a little, little bit of crafting of a message you, everybody's scared to talk about sex yeah <laughs> <laughs> You know, I've, when I when I think about this issue, and I think Michael brought up some really good points, it's the fact that, you know, we're not crafting the message and putting it out there as we should in a public relations standpoint, because really what it boils down to is, do you hate somebody enough that you want to pay for the room and board for the rest of their life? I love that. I'm stealing that. And <laughs> um, oh, no. Intellectual property laws saved me. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like any more laws. You know, so here I am, and this is, this is a relatively, you know, new cause for me, but privately here, you know, in my, in my suburb, we would giggle or laugh and say that, you know, a woman who's married to a man that married him for his money, that she's prostituting herself. And so society is willing to, you know, have a giggle at the expense of the idea of, of prostitution. But once again, what you have are you have two people who have a deal, right? They, they've consensually agreed to an arrangement. And, you know, they're even seeking arrangement websites. So 
if we look at it from what's in it for the public, I think it comes right down to what you said, Hody, which is we, you know, we as taxpayers should not be funding the room and board of somebody that we really don't disagree with their actions. It's, it's, it's another victimless crime gambit. And I, I would attack it from the taxpayer dollar issue. Do you want to, to pay to put her behind bars or him behind bars simply because they engaged in a consensual sex and then got paid for it? Yeah. Uh, do I hate their activity more than I love my own activities? If Even if I hate sex workers, like you talked about with the dollar thing, this is even above just the ph philosophy of the whole thing. Well, we got to pay for those jails. So now instead of me having money to go buy more burgers, I'm forfeiting that money to go lock up somebody who wanted to smoke pot or sex work you know and this is this is kind of the issue there but yeah I, go ahead yeah i know I we weren't done with the decriminalizing and and people agreeing with that go ahead i want to give a couple caveats is that i think pe people are going to have a hard time persuading people generally because they simply won't be able to believe because they don't have street cred as it were um and you're I saying i don't look like i have a lot of street cred <laughs> what I mean is, what I mean is that like actual sex workers would be able to cut through a lot of the propaganda very easily because their propaganda depends on like a certain narrative regarding sex workers, and a sex worker can just say, "No, you're full of shit." <laughs> <laughs> Whereas I wouldn't be able to do that and be believed. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Kristen, for cutting through all the shit for yeah. us today. <laughs> I mean, I did, I did not, yeah. I mean, you know, and it's funny because I even dealt with that when I started doing this because I did not start doing this until I was in my early thirties. And I thought, who is going to want to be with someone who's in their early thirties, who doesn't have blonde hair, who isn't 105 pounds, who doesn't have fake boobs. I mean, these are all the stereotypical things, you know, that you think of that's a sex worker. And, you know, I, you know, started doing this and I'm, thankfully quite successful with it. And, you know, the, the thing about it is with, you know, my clients, they said, you know, we don't want that. You know, we want somebody that we can sit down and talk with. We, I mean, most of my clients that I see are, you know, let's be honest, are forties, fifties, sixties. I mean, they have that disposable income. So, I mean, you know, and they said, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to spend my time with someone that's in their twenties or younger than that, as we see with the sex trafficking crap out there. Because I want to, I want to talk to someone. I want to spend time with them. I want to do whatever with them, which I, you know, I do tons of things with my clients much outside of the bedroom with that's the other thing that, you know, that's not discussed when it comes with sex work. I mean, I have gentlemen that, you know, I have a gentleman every Wednesday that, you know, books 24 hours with me. How much sex are we having in 24 hours? You know, it's, it's honestly 15, 20 minutes, you know, beyond that, what are we doing? We're watching movie together. We're cooking together. We're eating together. We're going to a movie. We're going to a play. We're, you know, going, taking the dogs for a walk. So, I mean, these are things that also are just not discussed. You know, you, you have that stereotypical thing that a sex worker is giving some guy a BJ in the back of a car in an alley. I've never done that. I don't know anybody that's ever done that, but that's, you know, that's what you see. And that's what you think is happening. You don't know any of the hoes from my is it high happening? school, but go ahead. <laughs> Maybe, but not to the extent that you see it happening. Well, and, and another point that, that she said was, um, the other point is that, so sex workers, they're, it's providing a service. Um, it, it's more than just sex, but it's also a service mm -hmm. to those who, who might not as easily because maybe they, they have social dis disorders or maybe they have um, a medical issue that, they, you know, maybe they don't feel like that they, they feel like they can reach out and meet someone. So, so there's a service, a, a, a compassionate service. Or men that just, but, men that just don't want that. You know, I, mean, I see guys that, that, you know, I see guys that try to date people on match.com and they're like, this is ridiculous. This is a waste of my time. You know, they, they say, I'm, I'm going back to seeing sex workers because I know exactly what to expect. I know who I'm going to be with and that's what I want, you know? Ultimately, Sorry, if it's really you. only about the sexual fantasy element, pornography exists. So, I mean, you're kind of set there. And so really, if you need another person there, it's probably more than just, like you said, like, here's 20 bucks. Let's do the, uh, 
I don't know how much of this I'm allowed to say in YouTube, but the in Utah, but the the back <laughs> car BJ thing, you know what I mean? Like it it is. I mean, I think it just patently you would know it'd be more than that. If somebody requires another person there, I mean, honestly, sexual fantasies are something that I think most people would prefer not to have somebody else in the room to talk with about because it's kind of embarrassing. And so sex work kind of kind of gets that out of there. And this is. I think that uh, this whole conversation is on the heels of us talking about how public perception isn't as bad as it's made out to be. And this is one of those things where you just say, wouldn't you want somebody, when you talk about an escort service, I have a friend who is an escort who says she probably only has sex about half of the time and not that she's not willing to all of the time. It's just sometimes they're like, hey, I'm going to my high school reunion. want to pretend I'm a big shot. And then all of a sudden I'm like, I need to hire an escort. My goodness. Like I am the the smallest shot ever from my high school graduation. Like I, I would love to, to, to appear that way. And so they, it does help change your frame of mind when you hear that they do these type of things because you just say, well, I wouldn't ever pay for sex because I'm a loser. Okay. Well, would you pay for companionship? I mean, I've gone on bunches of dates on like, I am in a relationship right now. I don't want anybody messaging my girlfriend, but I've been on <laughs> bunches of dates on match.com and, you know, and LDS singles.org. Yeah. Uh, and all of them, I pay for companionship and then see how it ends. And so, like you said, it's just kind of a way to guarantee <laughs> that it's a good time and yes. that it's somebody who knows what they're there for. And heck, if they're financially obligated to talk with me, then that's all the better. And I sit alone in that, my shame. Someone that knows what they're doing. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> um, some misconceptions that might be out there in regard to some of the public opinion as well. Um, so, well, as you might expect, progressives tend to favor more of the conservatives, but not nearly as much as you might think. And I wish I had better cross tabs on this to know like, like what the overlap is between positions and like what perhaps factions or, but I can say that as you might imagine, men tend to be much more favorable towards sex work than women by about a little over 10 points. Um, I was kind of surprised at this, but apparently um, communities of color tend to be a little bit more sour on it. I, I thought that they would have been a little more favorable just because yeah. they would have seen the drug war and its impacts and had made a connection there, but I guess that's not a thing. And I think that's where we come in to make that comparison, right? To say, hey, have you thought about it this way? It's where they don't think about it. You know, you've yeah. got a lot of these. I, I've not Go tried ahead. that. I've not seen any data on like what happens when you try that. So sure. Maybe? Well, that's exactly what it is. It's, it's, it's exactly what they're doing. And I actually make that comparison all the time. It's, it's exactly the drug war and, and um, sex work is exactly what they're doing. They're putting out bad propaganda. They're making these scare tactics that, oh, if you smoke the, the devil's lettuce, you're going to get addicted to it and you're going to start injecting it into your arm and um, you're going to eat people's brains. And so that's, um, that's what happens if you call Kristen. She's going to, you know, she's going to sell you, <laughs> sell you on some, some stuff and, you're, you're gonna you're gonna end up being out of house and home and <laughs> <laughs> nobody's gonna like you anymore so and that's what the government wants to do they they do it with everything we might everything. also end up going home with a dozen yeah. eggs because i have right. chickens in my backyard right your chicken right. <laughs> so i mean we we see it with with gun laws they 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 scare you you know if people have guns and you know everybody ends up dead because some gun magically went off um, you have, um, you have the drug war, um, the magic lettuce, uh, everybody all of a sudden is addicted to it. Um, and, and so now we're, we're, we're legalizing, decriminalizing, depending on what state you're in, um, marijuana, um, for different reasons. Um, we're legalizing or decriminalizing shrooms, which I love. That's great for different reasons. And it's time for us to get on board and we see, we we're hearing it a lot we hear people that are running i know um i'm a i'm a big kilm ruff fan but i've heard 
all of the Libertarian Party presidential candidates have been um, saying, yeah, let's decriminalize sex work. Um, and and that's great. I, they, they made a big deal about it in New York a couple of years ago and that they're doing it again. Decriminalize New York's doing some great stuff. Um, I believe there was a senator that was running on the platform to decriminalize sex work in New York a couple of years ago. She she was one of the first that the news was really talking about. Um, but it's happening. I mean, the Libertarian Party, we've been we've been talking about this for years. Norma Jean, love her to death. Um, she's done such amazing work in getting the statistics and data together for your state, whatever mm -hmm. state you're in. And it's all mar marked by, um, you can go and you can see where she's getting her data from. So you can fact check her. And most of it's at the FBI yes. website. You can look at the numbers. She, a big old pamphlet. Usually I have it right beside me, but I don't today. But it's that book of, of work. And she she's she's dedicated hundreds, probably thousands of hours. I'm, I'm sure thousands of hours of, of labor and it's a labor of love because this is what we need done. And she, she, she ran, um, for Lieutenant governor of California and, uh, I believe 81 or something. And, um, you know, she was on the Ricky Lake show or, you know, one of those shows and amazing woman. And so we've had people doing this. This has been a libertarian party thing, just like the LGBT community, just like the drug war, just like ending wars, you know, hashtag in wars. I'm, I'm all about it. Let's end it all. Let's get them out of here. Um, and we have to just know like who's talking to us. If it's the government, it's probably a lie. There's somebody who was actually running for Senate in Indiana that wanted to decriminalize sex worth this last election. I'm trying to remember who that was. Oh, wait, no, she's on the she's on the call with us. Hi, Lucy. <laughs> you know, it's always those darn libertarians. I mean, it's an economic issue at its heart. Um, Sarah, I don't know if, if you or Norma Jean, maybe she's compiled the statistics, um, but it seems to me that locking up, you know, people that smoke marijuana is really popular because they tend to be nonviolent, easy to lock up, easy to house and therefore profitable, uh, <laughs> profitable for the bed and uh, the bed and breakfast. Right. Um, for those providing the, you know, the room and board and the extra security just to make sure you're safe in those gated communities. So, you know, what are the economics of, uh, you know, arresting people in, in sex work? How easy is it for them to house them? And how profitable are they? Like, what's the total customer value? How many years are they going to get? Uh, what does that translate into for the private prison profiteers? I'm really curious. I believe that it's, um, and it's going to be state by state, but I believe the average is $3,800 that it costs to arrest someone. Um, they're typically sex work. If you're, if you're there for sex work, it depends on who you are. And if you know, like the procedures, like the, 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 when I was talking to the lady at the massage parlor, she was saying that she had an individual that had the one who had a police officer put his hand, uh, her hand on his private stuff, trying to be okay. Wiener. Yeah, well, I said the F <laughs> word already, so I'm trying to be good. Um, <laughs> but, um, she said that she was actually detained in prison before she saw anybody for over six months, which, which is against your civil liberties completely. Um, but, but they, she, who's helping her who like you, you get a public a defender. I mean, that's, that's it, it's, it's, it's horrible. And so when you look at it, you know, you're talking about, are they going to have to register as a sex offender? Are they paying fees? Um, how long are they being held in the cell? Um, mm -hmm. Are they going to, if, if they're not from the U S are they going to be deported? Um, yeah. I mean, th there's a lot of, questions it's going to add digits to that to that number i mean just just at at the beginning of it and i believe i, I want to say it was 3800 to start out mm. with so that the cost to taxpayers is it's high but then you also have to look at victims 
So let's you know? let's talk about some specifics here real quick. I know, you know, we got about well, a little over 15 minutes to go here, but I wanted to make sure that we got to the statistics part of this, the data, anything that you guys have. I did want to start, Sarah, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back to you. I did want to start with what you said about, uh, who was it, Norma Jean? And then, and what she compiled or, or cause, cause I'm sure you've got a million people that are interested in that. Like, would I find it on a Google search or what should I do there? Um, she has a website and the website is, um, and I'll, I'll link it in the, the, the thread as well. But the, the, the website is, um, prostitution, police and politics, I believe. Um, help, help me out, Kristen, if. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna look it up right now. I, you I, go I, ahead. I don't have it right here in front of me. I am sorry. Oh no no no, it's okay. I should have had it right in front of me too. But um, I mean, she has a couple. She has the um, coyotela.org, um, iswface.org, um, and then police, prostitution, mm -hmm. and politics dot com and that's a long one but that you go to uh, police um police prostitution and politics dot com and like i'm looking at my cell phone as my cheat sheet and you can't really see this i know but i mean she has every everything and anything you need if you're someone like me that's going out in the community i would i would suggest every um every state if you're a state chair or if you're um, involved with your state organization, and I'm talking about libertarian party people, if you're just, if not just, if you're a libertarian, or if you're just, you lean one way or the other, or if you just like the idea of decriminalizing prostitution, you can go to this, and I'm pretty sure you can message Norma Jean. I would, I would ask you, this is me asking, nobody else, I would ask you to contribute some money toward it because she'll she prints this stuff up and it does it's nothing's free. We're not Bernie Sanders here. Um, she prints this stuff up and she mails it to you. She's mailed me a nice big box of stuff um, and uh, way more than what I donated to 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 the whole thing. But um, she'll give you tons of stuff. So if you're if you're an affiliate in of any in any way, shape, and or form. I would suggest going to that. Um, Alex, she's the vice chair of SWAP, Sex Worker Outreach Project. They have several chapters. Um, they're a different organization. They focus on sex work um, policies as well. Um, and they have some resources as well. Um, you can look and see if they have a chapter in your area. If they don't, if you're interested, you can start a chapter. Um, if you're not as well versed as you would like to be. You can take a look at what your stuff, what stuff's going on with them. But I definitely recommend getting some stuff from um, from the it's police, prostitution, and politics. Yeah, I'm I'm looking at that right now, and they've got a a, a great do the math uh, that yeah. they that they update yearly there and. Uh, yeah. Uh, interesting. So the FBI says there's uh, 100,000 to 300,000 children trafficked into prostitution every year and that they're what sold to 10 to 15 men per day, which is horrifying and terrible, right? Like I, I want to make that clear. Oh, okay. If you actually look at the, if you have actually look at the statistics, cause I actually did a Twitter argument with someone about this because yeah. I, I mean, life is short. We all need to argue on Twitter and um, <laughs> they had quoted that. And if you actually go a little bit deeper to um, what, what the FBI actually said is in the, the latest statistics that they have published is in 2017, there were 14 cases, 14 cases of child sex slavery slash slash sex trafficking, which is disgusting and awful in itself. But it's not a hundred thousand. Exactly. And and so if, but, you know what we need to do is we need to be making sure that like there's this huge thing that I don't know when it started exactly, but you've probably heard the term stranger danger. It's a myth. And most mm -hmm. kidnappings yes. in general are parent from parents, sometimes other family, but it's almost all family in some way, shape, or form like 90 like something like 90 percent 
and it's usually during custody disputes. And I want to say something about that as well, because you know, I want to say something about that on the, the sex worker line, because you often think that sex work is super dangerous, but in actuality, the most um, time that women have violence against them is because of their husbands or boyfriends. It's not, it's, it's not being a sex worker that most of the violence is happening. We're, we're, our, our life is not more dangerous than any other female. If, if you're going to have violence against you, it's more than likely going to be because of an intimate partner that you're married or that you live with or something like that. Same thing that Michael was saying, you know, it's, you know, it's, it's just out there and it's not real. Right. It's, it's dirty math. I mean, to finish my statistic, like I was going to say, I mean, like you're saying, they've caught 14 that were being sex trafficked, yes. actually sex trafficked. But of course, they, they estimate, because they've caught 14, that there must be between 100 and 300,000 every year. It, here's, here's the issue with that. Right. That would be 200,000 men, 200, I'm sorry, million men hiring minors every year. But there's only 108 million men in the United States between the ages of 20 and 79. So, I mean, that's one of those, like, look to your left, look to your light, right? Both of these men are sex traffickers type of thing. Like, it, it's just, we know it's not true. And so they've given us this highball yeah. estimate. They blow, they blow it up. They say it's out of control. They found 14 and good for them. But, and we're not saying do nothing yeah. about those 14. But what we are saying is you're not going to find $300,000 or 300,000 children. You're trying to find $300,000. You want money. You're trying to get cash so that you get bigger, your thing grows, you can crack down on more people. And then what? You can find 18 and then say, okay, it must be 500,000 actually. We, you know, sorry about that. We, we still need more. I mean, this is just the nature of government, right? Giving you bad, bad numbers. But yeah, that is cool. Uh, police, prostitution, and politics. Uh, anybody else with statistics, facts, anything they want to bring up? I have a couple of really interesting um, videos and podcasts, TED Talks, those types of things that I like to share with people. Um, one of them was what I was talking about earlier in regards to the um, when they decriminalized in in um, Rhode Island. And um, I thought that was a really interesting thing because it showed that there was no increase in any kind of criminal activity such as murder or a robbery, drugs, no, nothing of that nature. But only the only thing that changed was violent rape went down. And it was during this time period when the national average was actually increasing at that time in national. So I thought that was a really, it's really interesting. And I'll link the ones that I really like. Um, if you want to learn more and hear from someone else in a different um, format, um, I think that there's a lot of data. Maggie McNeil, she does some really great podcasts as well. She's done a lot of, um, she's done some interviews with Reason. And um, I like them as a great resource for people to listen to. But it's good to listen to also the stuff that you, that you hear that, that and see where you can visually see some of the stuff that they're saying go they're they're just kind of trying to pry on our emotions and try pry on our feelings and so they they can extort more of our freedoms and liberties and money and um you know it, it's it's kind of good to see where is this money coming from that's putting out these websites that are telling you this this myth and um when you look, when you follow the money and you see the talking points, then you go, okay, now I know. And so um, I, I'll, I'll be sure to link those. Um, but I, like Kristen had said earlier, other than Rhode Island for that short period of time for indoor pros prostitution, there's only one country that's actually decriminalized. And really, if you're going to get stat statistics and data from anywhere, that's the place to get it from to see what what happened there instead of all these um, mythical, oh, well, what if you do this, then this might happen. And what country and is this that I'm going to be taking my next vacation to? <laughs> <laughs> He's getting in trouble with your girlfriend. New Zealand. Hey, it's legal. Therefore, it must be normal. Uh, listen, look, so here's, or I'm sorry, not legal. It's decriminalized. Decriminalized. There must be, for it must be de okay. de 
unnormalized. Anyway, I don't know how to say that. <laughs> what I do want to finish off here now that we're in the we're in the final stretches here. Um, I think the last holdout would be this. We brought up numbers, we brought up figures, we brought we've talked about some philosophy. You guys have given me some great stories. I think the last pocket of holdouts that I can even think of would be those we'll just call them the um the moral squad, the 700 club folks who say, okay, maybe I don't want to pay for somebody to get locked up, but I'm worried that it's going to become normalized, right? This is the, uh, this is the skiing lessons argument that you may or may not be familiar with, right? This is the, uh, the, well, you know, I don't want it to be seen like taking some ski lessons. Oh yeah. Have some sex, take some ski lessons. It's all the same. What would you say to those people? Um, so one thing that's desperately needed is good, not just pulling data on some of the cro with really granular cross tabs, but also focus groups of certain demographics. And it hasn't been done because there's simply just a lot more money being pumped. There isn't just enough money being pumped into the into this, and a lot of this kind of information is pay to play so you actually have to it, it would require six figures or more of money to actually like get all enough granular enough information that's the make it scientific but one thing i will say is that if you rely solely on just hard facts you, unless you're a sex worker who can just cut through stuff like you will get smashed like you're gonna have to like you're going to have to play to people's emotions and, and even it'll help sex workers to do it as well do both facts and play to emotion mike you, you completely did not answer Hody's question. Oh, so, but like, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I've been That's doing debates time. with the candidates. I am so used to them evading the questions. This is, doesn't even phase me anymore. Uh, <laughs> you're, you're, you're fine, though. Uh, I'm, I mean, you had to get that point out. I, I'm sorry. You might have yeah, not gotten your full chance. Our house. <laughs> so, so you're fine. Yeah, the normal. No, well, I would, I would, go ahead. You know, and I would like to I would like to make a comment on that because I'm a sex worker. Um, you can see me anywhere around town. I shop at Target. Um, you know, I, I mow my lawn. I pay my taxes. I walk my dogs. Um, my neighbors don't complain about me as far as I know. Um, they stop by and get eggs. So I, I guess they're okay with me. Um, they wave at me when they see me walking. So I, I think it's just, um, you know, it's, it's that stigma that we need to get past that we're not normal people that the people that the gentlemen that visit me are not normal people. Um, and it's, it's not necessarily that, you know, like you had mentioned before that, that you have to be morally okay with it. It's, it's that it's not hurting you. So we have to get past that point in society that we say that it's, it's, it, if this doesn't affect you, get over it. Well, and also you have to kind there of normalize it too, because you want to be able to have these conversations because I don't believe uh -huh. that there are people out there who just truly want sex workers to be victimized. I mean, maybe they don't want sex workers uh -huh. to be sex workers, but I don't think that they honestly want to hurt sex workers. And I think it's really important. This is why I wanted to do this as well is because I think there are people who, who want to see harm reduction. And that's just what they want to see. And it's, it comes back to those good intentions. And that's the problem that, that that's what's gotten us in this problem is some people have the good intentions and some people just want control over your life. And so until we normalize it, we're not able to have conversations. It's the same thing with the LGBT community. Um, same thing with women voting, mm -hmm. you know, um, women having been able to ha have a voice, you know, and, and not to make this a feminist thing or anything, but, but it, throughout time, um, people, people of color being, you know, treated human and with respect. I mean, we have to have a conversation. We have to normalize that, 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 that idea, that, that, that position that there are people that do this for a living and we need to be able to have conversations so we can say, what, what are you doing? I love that and you'll be like, able to drop the F word, but you'll apologize when you talk about women voting, because that is just, my audience has some limits, Sarah, please. Go ahead, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, some people you're just not going to convince anytime soon, but I will say that if you know, it, in a matter of like, I don't know exactly, but like 10 years or so, like people who are gay, it went from like, 
fairly extreme disapproval to approval of gay marriage. And a big part of that, there was other things going on, but is that people were able to come out of the closet because the Supreme Court struck down the anti-sodomy laws. Yeah. Once it was, they were able mm-hmm. to like be out in the yes. open and not be persecuted, then people were able to see them and not and realize that they were normal people. You know what I'm saying? What I'm hearing is we need a sex yes. worker next door PR campaign. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> At the I, end of the day, when it comes to morals, though, you know, morally, I I'll, I'll tell you, like I used to be a big churchgoer. Morally, it is immoral for me to put someone in prison for a victimless offense. It yes. is immoral for me to p- keep on pushing down these laws down the throats of individuals that's creating more harm than good. It's immoral for me to use resources from police agencies and from all these other places that could go to people who actually need that help. Not that I'm asking for taxes or any government, anything, but I'm just saying like, we're going to have resources. If we got our utopia, we would still have resources. And I don't want resources being wasted on people. That's actually by creating victims. I want it to set these people free, set everyone free, not just, not just, not just sex workers, but everyone. And so, you know, I think that that's the immoral thing. You want to talk about immoral? I think that's immoral. So get out of the bedroom and and leave people alone. Yeah. Stop. I never thought we'd talk about sex work and talk about getting out of the bedroom, but yeah, good call. <laughs> uh, the, the It's so, and where I was going with this is, I mean, it's, look, let's be honest here. I've been on a college campus before. If you tell me that because you know, uh, drugs and alcohol aren't allowed on college campuses. Therefore it's not normalized. I got bad news when you hit college, my friend, it is very normalized, right? It's beyond normalized. (laughs) It is rampant on college camp campuses. Illegalization does nothing to help you as far as, as far as normalized or not anymore. Well, go ahead. So what depends on the price point, right? Weed is a lot like, well, weed and a lot of other drugs are a lot cheaper than what you might pay for sex because that involves another person rather than like an inanimate substance. Right. Well, I had to shower in the neighbor's dorm because they were growing pot in our shower. So, I mean, I just, that, that's, <laughs> this is what happens. Everybody, I mean, I, there's the joke in all the college movies. They turn everything into a bong, right? They're smoking out of a pencil. They're smoking out of an apple. It's normalized. You know, that's all you can do. You know, it's the people that want to, pr- they think they're protecting their kids by pretending that certain things in this world don't exist. So they don't want to teach them about it. Oh no, what if my little, little boy sees two other boys holding hands, then all of a sudden he's going to be gay. Well, there is maybe some things that you should teach your kid about you know and and maybe that would instead of you having him not be gay by teaching him there's no such thing as gay people maybe just have him confront reality a little bit earlier i mean there's homosexuality in the bible mr christian i don't know what to tell you like do you do you also censor your own book from him all right so here we're libertarians we'd like to do final thoughts and i want to make sure that we got it all off our chests some case maybe literally off your chests. <laughs> and I just want to make sure that all you guys got to say exactly what you wanted to say. Uh, that'll be my final thoughts. Really, I, I, I really appreciate everyone saying what they had to say, coming on the show. I know that it is a, uh, I don't know, controversial topic and not one that everybody sees eye to eye on, but I really appreciate you guys being bold and coming on and talking about this. Uh, we are already getting comments and views like I haven't even seen before. So... Uh, usually if I just put sex work in the title, that's kind of all I need and it sells itself. But I, I'm grateful for everybody who tuned in. Uh, please support us on Patreon. Please follow these guys. If you have any questions, go ahead and ask them. Please ask appropriate questions. Please. Okay. Um, and to all the people who are asking, no, I'm not going to start doing sex work anytime soon. I, I That's the highest volume of questions that I have on this. So I'm... Sorry to disappoint you, uh, but go ahead, Michael. Let's start with you. What are your final thoughts? Um, well, um, I, I don't think people should be nearly as shy as they are about the issue. I mean, as long as you are sufficiently tactful and careful in how, how you say things, I mean, you should, in theory, be able to talk to almost any group, any demographic. So, 
I've talked to numerous candidates, for example, who don't want to touch the issue because they're just afraid of how it's going to affect things, like affect their campaign, how their image, their jobs, et cetera. And it's a matter of how you broach the issue. Okay. Yeah. Uh, lots, lots of fear there. The, and if you think a politician's afraid to talk about it, imagine how somebody else, how afraid and, us little guys are to do it. Right. And at the end of the day, it all comes to fear. People are afraid to talk about it. So you never hear it. And that's why, so there's kind of like a feedback loop catch 22 there. Yeah. So break the, break the stigma and talk about it. Cool. Thank you. Uh, Sarah Daggers. Um, I would just say final th thoughts are, um, get the data, get the information. Um, if, if you need more information, send me a message. I'm not going to sit there and chat with you all day long because I'm sorry, I don't have that kind of time, but I'm going to point you in the right direction if I can. If you're a candidate, don't be scared to talk about this because let me tell you something. You get out there and you start talking about sex work, you're going to get some news. <laughs> the news are going to be calling you like, what is this crazy person? But be prepared. And if you're going to do it, then you know, go big or go home. I'll get you the information that you need if that's gonna if that'll help you. Norma Jean, she has resources. Kristen, I mean, we're here to help. We're here to facilitate because we want to make you a stronger act activist in in the world. And that's that's what we're here to do is point you in the right direction. You want to help, and we want you to help. We want you to have the tools. We want you to have the information. We want you to have the data. And um, you know, I just really appreciate everyone who who's been embracing this conversation, this topic, with so much passion. Um, so um, again, I, also a final thing, real quick. Thank you, delegates, for passing this platform. I want to read it one more time because I'm so proud of it. The Libertarian Party supports the decriminalization of prostitution. We assert the right of consenting adults to provide sexual services to clients for compassion and the right of clients to purchase sexual services from consenting sex workers. Um, it's great. If you need more information, let let one of us know. We'll get you there. Thanks. Thanks for having us on the show, too. Oh, no problem, Sarah. Yeah. And let's... Uh... Lucy, you're up next. There's a whole, I, I hate to tell you, you're saying the, the, the motto should be what, uh, sex workers next door. There's sex a whole, worker next door. there's a right. whole and genre of pornography with that. So I, Oh, I had, I had no idea. I'm an old married lady with 10 kids. So clearly I've never had sex, right? Uh, yeah, I, <laughs> let me teach you a thing or two. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I, no, uh, I think it all boils down to, um, us as individuals. Lucy, you probably, you Probably many of your neighbors are sex workers you didn't uh, even know. Oh gosh, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, the uh, yeah, uh, go ahead, go ahead, Lucy, finish up. <laughs> okay, sorry. Yeah, sorry, I've got a little bit of buffering going on. Yeah, yeah, you're good. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, um, we have to be brave as individuals. Sometimes it's really difficult. I, I'm an extrovert clearly but i think a lot of us in the libertarian party tend to be a little bit more introverted and when that opportunity comes up to speak on the side of liberty um, i think sometimes people shy away and especially if the word sex comes up i think people tend to get just a little bit nervous about standing up and saying what they really believe and so i think the responsibility to normalize and to insert a little bit of sanity into our culture rests with every single one of us to speak up when the time is right and to come up in defense of sex workers in their chosen profession and to you know put the spotlight back on the fact that these are just human beings um who have chosen a different profession than you have you know not everybody can be a doctor not everybody can be a lawyer not everybody can be a sex worker but clearly we should all get to choose what it is we want to do awesome well said and uh kristen calhoun we'll finish with you uh you know, as, as Lucy said, um, you know, we're, we're regular people. We're your next door neighbors. Um, you know, we, you see us at Target. <laughs> so, I mean, it's, you know, we, we need to, we need to get rid of the stigma that, you know, we're, we're not regular people because we are, um, you know, and the other thing I wanted to point out is, you know, as a, as a proud member of the Libertarian Party, I mean, I am very happily, very and very able to help any candidates that have any questions. I'm very happy to help anybody that has any questions about sex work um, so that I can help to inform them and help to inform them what our, you know, our, our party stances and what they can do to, you know, help to inform other people and hopefully help to decriminalize sex work. 
Awesome. Thank you so much. Yeah, you uh, you mentioned being busy on Wednesdays. There are several people asking how your Thursdays look right now. Uh, I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Uh, <laughs> I appreciate you all so much again for coming on the show, guys. It's been a lot of fun. It's been really informative. And I just wanted to say how much I appreciate it. Again, if you're a supporter of us on Patreon, we appreciate it. Thank you for enabling us to do these things and uh, get involved. Until next time, everybody, keep fueling the fires of liberty. <laughs>